Hello, and a good swooping afternoon to you, magpies. You know, sometimes people ask me, what does your ideal Dungeons & Dragons game look like? And by people, I mean myself, as I am alone in the shower. But you know what I have come to realize in those steamy moments of quiet contemplation? It's that my ideal D&D game is entirely dependent on factors beyond my ability to control. Namely, my players. So therefore, I shall answer the adjacent question. What does my ideal party look like? Well, I suppose they all like and respect each other, obviously. They don't get all hung up on the maths and the rules and they're invested in each other's stories and they get excited to see their friends just do cool stuff. But also, my ideal party is a group of individuals who all know and practice the secret of D&D. Oh, what's that? You, you say you don't know the secret? Well, you're in luck, magpies, because I am about to tell you. And then we'll both know it together. The secret of D&D, you see, is to take every possible opportunity to speak in character to one another endlessly about anything for hours and hours on end until I have to step in and physically drag you kicking and screaming back to the plot. I'm not joking and this isn't just a personal preference thing. This one simple thing in your games will tangibly improve the quality of your stories. Not just on the player's end, but it will also make the DM's job just so much easier. For you see, if you're just going to be another group who just sits around a table and stares at me dead-eyed, shaking your dice and asking what happens next. I'm, I'm going to blow through my prepared content every single game. You see, while it is true the role-playing does significantly slow down the pace of the game, this is kind of a good thing and it also lets you create your own content and your own stories, as well as building better rapport with the people around you. So if you're just going to chew your way through the monster manual, you're not going to give me space to work and the moments of random inspiration to build you an ever-growing backlog of content that is just going to get more and more polished over time. But if you do, by the time you finally do get to the dungeon, after all of your shenanigans, after all of your relationship drama, and your endlessly overanalyzing the plot over marshmallows and mead, then, then you will find waiting for you the best goddamn dungeon that I can possibly build. Now, obviously, no group is going to start out with this kind of dynamic, especially if you haven't played much with one another before. It takes time to build rapport, and while obviously respect is key, and this means boundaries as well as affection, but also building rapport leans heavily on key players who know how to bring each other into scenes and out of their shells without being the center of attention themselves. But it also takes a DM who 
can recognize group dynamics and will make room for them to flourish into something truly magical. So that's my advice for new and experienced DMs to make room in your plans, in your heart and at your table for your players to take over, to make the scenes their own and for you to be their biggest fan when they do. But remember as well that at the end of the day, whether it happens or not, is entirely dependent on factors beyond your ability to control, namely your players. So I'm sorry magpies if you saw the title of this video and clicked on thinking that it was going to be a big ol' expose, but then I just went ahead and told you something really quite simple. that. It's fun to goof around with your friends. But if you will pardon the cliche, sometimes it really is the simple things that matter the most. And if the state of our games is such that this could ever really be called a secret, then I feel perfectly justified in wanting to share it.